Erica Lance, I cannot hear you. That's because I did my ghost scrabblers. <laughs> I don't know why I did it that way. I'm very sorry. <laughs> I was like, oh no, it's broken. <laughs> what are you know, gonna do? You just cannot hit the right buttons to make life exist properly. <laughs> but I am super excited because we are in undead October. And I'm not going to wait too long before we bring our guest on, but I have to say something Mark would say, because he's here with us in a ghostly form, so to speak. <laughs> in spirit. In spirit. And he would say, we're, you know, on a Halloween night, there are always more trick-or-treaters in the town than there are children. This episode today makes me think of that. So... Without further ado, and bringing potentially alive, maybe, I don't know, you guys can decide for yourself, but one of our absolute faves is coming to join us for our favorite ghost haunted movies, Mr. J. Michael Roddy. Woo! Come play with us, Danny. Oh. Ever and ever and ever. Oh my That's gosh. a perfect ghost movie. It is. Yeah. We, and yeah. It might be on my list. We won't do sneaky peekies yet, but... I just did. You just did. Oh, you did. There, there's no rules with Michael. Look behind me. There's a ghost. Yeah. Oh, no. There's a, a head on a chair. There's a lot going on. That's Kurt Marlow from Salem's Lot, one of the best TV movies ever made. Did well, you watch the new one yet? What's happening with the new Salem's Lot? Are you excited for that? I'm very excited. I haven't watched it yet. I'm picking a night because uh, the the way I saw the original was so awesome and as a memory for me. Um, and it's interesting because the original Salem Zot came out in November, believe it or not. Oh. It oh. missed Halloween. Yeah, no, I saw it at, on its original telecast in, I believe, 1979. And um, yeah, so it's one of my favorites and I'm really excited. You know, I've read a couple of reviews. I'm, I'm just like, man, I... I don't think, uh, I don't know. Sometimes I just pe think people just can't be happy, but. Yeah. And no, Stephen I, King, like films and TV are very divisive. Yeah. I usually like them all just because I'm so happy he has, you know, films. So I'm just like, it's fine. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't so have to be perfect. The people behind the scenes, I will say this. There are a lot of times, and I think this was very true. I've talked about this a little bit with the Star Wars franchise, but there are others like that that there is so much time between when they decide to remake something and when they did the original that we built all this lore and all this phenomenon behind it. And then they come in and they give their idea of what they think we want. And we're like, uh, no. We've created yeah. this other thing. Look at all this fanfic we've written. Right. That's not how I would have done it. Well, yeah. And then to that then, I say, go do it. Go do yeah. it. So I want to just tell you, so Mark, you know, he's resting and everything, but he did have a chance to throw together his list, which I got. Mm -hmm. And he called out what he thought we were going to say, all three of us. So it'll be interesting to see if his predictions are true. So uh -oh. really, I think huh. he's going to be judgmental. I feel like he's been like reading this. It's a little judgmental, but it's okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to throw it up there when we get to certain points. But I want to start with what was the first ghost slash haunted movie you remember seeing? Mm. So I'm going to go with mine since I just posed this both to you as a question. And the first one I remember seeing was Poltergeist. Oh, wow. The original Poltergeist. Wow. Was the first like true haunted ghost movie that i ever saw now this might be on people's list so i'm sorry if i i do that but i think that like i remember they're here oh my god that was yeah. like my lesson in don't build on indian burial grounds although i feel yeah. like that rule is violated all the time but, every day and clowns like that had a cacophony yeah a skeleton floating up in the Ah, well, see, I, think, I don't you remember. say poltergeist that's the first one you remember seeing you didn't see I, anything else before that well first ghost haunted movie that i remember seeing really yeah okay all right there's a lot of judgment in your tone mike i know no, 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 no. I'm, I'm just surprised. like i would have thought 
I would have thought little Erica would have seen other ghost stories before that, but that's great. No, Poltergeist is a great one. Although Poltergeist is not on my list. Okay. What about you, Bo? Did, did Poltergeist make your list? It did, but I didn't see it until much later in life, like five years ago. And oh. whilst I liked it, I kind of liked the lore behind it more of them making the movie and knowing yeah. all like the little like tidbits made it more interesting yeah. than the original movie is by itself. No, and you know, th like that, and then we'll get to your guys' You, you have to remember, I think, I'd have to look up when the first original Poltergeist came out, but it was in the early 80s. 1982. 82. So I was nine when that yeah. happened, right? And when you're nine years old and you see stuff like that, it's kind of like the first Freddy Krueger, all that, you know, like, they imprinted. It was very, very scary. Now, in comparison to movies these days and how they do stuff and, you know, things like Ah, very different, but my little nine-year-old self, that scared the bejesus out of me. So that was mine, Bo. <laughs> what was yours? When I was a kid, I was very easily scared. And I had horrible, untreated anxiety. So I wasn't big into horror until I was a teenager. But I think the first, like, ghost film or TV was like, I know I bring this up all the time, but it was Scooby-Doo. <laughs> And it was like any episode was, you know, a ghost that turned out just to be a normal guy. So it wasn't very scary. And I always think about like the Headless Horseman episode for some reason. Like that is the one that's like in my head with like Scooby-Doo and Scooby-Dum, who I liked a lot, even though no one likes Scooby-Dum. No, yeah. no one does. No, nobody he's, does. He's my boy. I love him in his little red hat. That's yeah, right. no, he, he, he ruined Scooby-Doo. Yeah, we're moving on from that to uh, Michael's uh, first one that you remember seeing. So the first one I remember seeing, because there was a lot, but I'm going to say it was probably The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, oh. which the, the, the Disney version, right? Mm -hmm. And when I, you know, I, I was thinking about this list, too, like what what is 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 the headless horseman a ghost or is he a phantom but to me that was the first one that and then also you know um growing up in the early 70s haunted mansion that one two punch disney kind of owned halloween for me and owned ghosts but on the flip side of that legend of sleepy hollow is not on my list although i love it more than anything i watch it every year it's i love the lore of the headless horseman i think it's a great great story and I want to point out something about Poltergeist. You know, Poltergeist came out the same summer as E.T. No, but E.T. actually traumatized me that summer, too, because <laughs> like now as an adult, I can look at E.T. and go, oh, I get it. But as a child, what happened to them and the whole scientists yeah. and like yeah. that was tr I was so upset after seeing E.T. My mom could not calm me down for days. Like, yeah. Well, it's funny. Oh, when they have the plastic tubes and they go oh, yeah. through them. Ooh. Yeah, and the guy with the keys, the sound of the keys. Well, if you ever get a chance, there's a great documentary called 1982, The Greatest Geek Year Ever. And it still is, it still rings true because in that summer, or in, in the year of 1982, but in that summer alone, you had Poltergeist, E.T., The Thing, Star Trek II. I mean, the hits just kept on coming, right? It was a perfect summer. Every time you went to the... It seemed like every weekend you went to the movie, there was a movie that would shape just your your childhood. But I, it's funny because when I look at Poltergeist, there's so much stuff going on in there. I don't view it as a ghost story per se, even though ghosts are at the foundation of it. But there's also, you know, this this kind of undercurrent of the thing they call the beast that's on the other mm -hmm. side. And then there's the the skeletal zombies and all that kind of stuff. But no, Poltergeist is amazing. So that's it's a good true. one to be initiated but into. The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, and I could bring up Sleepy Hollow because it comes to, you know, the witch summons him. If that's yep. somehow a spoiler alert, guys, get out from under a rock. So it's Ooh, you're so old. It is, but I, I sometimes get yelled at by travelers who are like, you spoiled it. I'm like, that movie is 30 years old. I haven't spoiled anything. Um, but you look at Sleepy Hollow and you go, is that a ghost movie? Because 
they're summoning a spirit and they're, you know, but because when I was looking up movies and trying to refresh myself with some of my favorites, like the exorcist came up under a ghost movie and I'm like, mm, that's not a ghost movie. I don't think that qualifies as a ghost movie, right? No, 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 no. no, no. There's no so, ghost in it. No, that's what. Well, so the tenuous fiber that is demons ghosts and supernatural True. right all of those are looped into a supernatural umbrella. like a supernatural That's soup they're just like yeah. it's yeah, all of not, that yeah exorcist is far from a ghost story that's okay that's i think we should jump in jump into our five i'm going to start with mark's number five okay okay because we always see whether or not we call out the same ones and his is quarter mass and the pit oh that's a good one that's a good uh, one 1967, apparently a strange artifact is dug up while trying to build a new section of the london underground and professor quartermass is called to figure out the strange effects on its people and its origin dun, 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 dun. so apparently it's amazing and the ending is disquieting and it was made for tv of the same name same name and aired in 19 19- 58 which is great to watch as well so it has nigel keel of course we all knew it has nigel keel that's why mark put it on his loves him yeah so it was remade and it's a great watch he says so that is mark's number five and to answer erie florida's question i did not see the poltergeist tv series the legacy i didn't see it did you guys i didn't even know there was one okay i might watch it Uh... number five Bo, what's yours well, I didn't put mine in a particular order, but well, pick um, one. pick one. All right, I'm gonna go with Crimson Peak. Oh, it's not yeah. a great movie. Uh, let me just preface that it's not a good movie, but I liked how they did like the ghosts with like the red and the blue, so they look like old 3D kind of vibes. It was basically a story we've all heard a million times. You know, we're going to this old house and. She's going to be with this man who's Tom Middleston. You know, like, it's not the best movie I've ever seen. And we have a great Yeah, (laughs) you gotta, you gotta, if you're going to do that movie, there has to be a little sprinkling of incest on top. I just like the, basically the ghost, how they were interpreted on film, which was different than how I've seen them interpreted in other ghost genre films. Uh, okay, I will give you that. I will give you that. Okay, Michael, what is yours? So first, if Mark's listening, I want to have a conversation of why he thinks Quarter Mass in the Pit is a ghost story, as opposed to a Cthulhu Lovecraft story. They could Ooh. both be the same. Oh, but- oh, call it out! Fighting words. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So um, we have a gauntlet thrown. Yeah. So. Um, <laughs> My number five is a movie called The Legend of Hell House. Not The Haunting of Hill House. The Legend of Hell House. And is it, it is the a, same uh, plot? Like similar plot wise? Similar. Um, so or The Legend of Hell House is years ago, there's this big gothic mansion in England, right? And they were investigating. A group of psychics were investigating. And something really terrible happened. And only one of them got out alive. Okay, played by the expert Roddy McDowell, right? So oh. now, set around Christmas, by the way, they're supposed to stay there for one week, I think it is, to investigate. They have new equipment. So there's four very different people uh, that have different ideas. One's a clairvoyant, one's a scientist. Uh, Roddy McDowell is also kind of a clairvoyant a psychic. And it's incredible to find out like what the... The legend is and what happens it's uh i believe it's on streaming it's fantastic it's full of great scares it's full of great atmosphere it's a great halloween movie it feels cold right it's just the cinematography is great i really love it and it's uh richard matheson was the writer who did who put it together so you know it's um it's certainly got some street cred there i like it okay so my number five is gonna be stir of echoes can you remind me of the plot it's sound the title is familiar but Kevin i just Baker remember the fingernails yeah. the fingernail getting caught in the yeah 
Kevin Bacon plays the bad guy, <laughs> and I love it so much. Yeah. So Stir of Echoes is going to be my number five. If you, you know, it's kind of like uh, another one of my favorites that didn't make a list, the list, but it's the same kind of thing where somebody who normally plays a hero for us plays the bad guy. Yeah. And that's what lies beneath with Harrison Ford. Oh, oh I yeah. love what lies beneath. That's a what good lies one. beneath with Harrison Ford is... I love that movie. They did a great job with the ghost in that movie, but both of those stir of echoes in that one have yeah. some of our favorite hero type guys normally go into the dark side. So I yeah. appreciate that. Yeah. Let me go next on Mark's list, which um, I just want to point out Mark's oldest movie on his list is from 1980. But this wow, is not that's that movie. Seemed, that's... <laughs> no, no, no. Quarter Mass in the Pits from 1967. Yes, I know. I'm just saying I've looked at all of the ones on his list now. and um, the He doesn't have any movies. modern films at all. No, oh, not, oh, not okay. at all. But oh. well, his number four is The Uninvited from 19. Oh, that's great with Ray Milland. Yeah, that's great. That's a great one. Yes, he says uh, Ray Milland and Ruth Hussey. I hope I said that right. Discover a new home is haunted. Uh, the shadows and innovative camera techniques still hold up well. And then there's a good mystery, he says, hiding behind what's happening. And I think they remade The Uninvited, didn't they? They probably Or there's have. just been that title used before, but it's a very, like, general title. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, Michael? What's your number four? My number four, this isn't going to be a funny one. Are you ready? Yeah. Yes. Ghostbusters. Yes! That's on my list. Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters is on my list. Yeah, it's, um, you know, that along with Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein are, you know, perfect horror comedies and American Werewolf in London. But Ghostbusters, what could have quickly descended into juvenile, you know, kind of uh, animal house feelings and everything, it, it, uh, it stayed true. I mean, at no point, even though those characters are so funny, they still take it very seriously. You know, the Dan Aykroyd, Ray Stance character is so grounded, Egon Spengler, and the ghosts are scary. The ghosts are scary. I, I will say, it. watching, and I've said this on this podcast before, watching the original Ghostbusters librarian scene, she scared yeah. the shit out of me. Yeah. Like, yeah. when and, she turned and even the, towards them. Yeah. And the taxi yeah. cab. You know, when when the when the containment center is shut down, the containment units shut down and all those orbs, you know, which is very similar to a scene in Poltergeist. But these are over the city. It's just it's very creepy. And there's a piece of music when they're going back to the firehouse and a discussion between Dan Aykroyd and um, uh, Winston Zedmore, Ernie Hudson, uh, just about revelation in the book of days and what's going on that just sets the tone at the end of that movie. like wow, the stakes are kind of high here, aren't they? This is not just a funny comedy. It's 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 scary. It's good. Yeah. No, I, I agree. I agree. What about you, Bo? What's your number four-ish? I'm going to go for another horror comedy ghost film, and I'm going to go with The Frighteners. Oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah so The Frighteners, the Frighteners, Frighteners was, is in my honorable mention. Two. Yeah. Yeah, Frighteners is in my honorable mention. That should have been more popular than it was. Yeah, um, it's it's really good. I don't understand why it doesn't come up when people talk about like Michael J. Fox's film roles. Yeah. yeah. Well, and directed by Peter Jackson. So yeah. you know, um it's the, and the effects are fantastic. I mean, the score is fantastic by Danny Elfman, and it's scary. That movie is scary. Yeah. Yeah. There are definitely, I remember, like, really scary moments, and then they would, like, add a little comedy so you could, like, catch your breath again, and then they would be, like, smack upside the head. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to throw another one that's a comedy in there, too, because you said Ghostbusters, so I'm going to throw this one in instead. Beetlejuice. Oh, sure. Sure. Yeah, he yeah. does say he's the ghost. This with the most. He, this, I guess, he's is the a ghost, ghost with the most. Yeah, he he is. He's a ghost, and then the other people are ghosts. Now, the rules of being a ghost are a little bit different in that movie. But I will say, even that movie, which was mostly humorous, had a couple really unpleasant kind of scenes that went to it. 
And I think people don't give it enough credit with how dark it kind of goes. If you really look at the undertones of what Beetlejuice was trying to do, it's all cute and fun, except for he's trying to marry a 14 year old girl. Right. So what are your thoughts on Beetlejuice Beetlejuice? I haven't seen it yet because oh. we were going to go to the theater and then um, we, we had a little bit of a storm come through <laughs> up here, just a little, a little tickle of something. So it's, yeah. it's on my list to do, but um, I've heard really great things about it, that they did a pretty good job. But again, I think it's one of those movies, like I have to not expect something in there and just watch it for what it is. Because yeah. it's one of these movies that I've seen a bazillion times every Halloween season. I watch Beetlejuice. I love it. And I think that if they didn't do what I want them to do, I'd be mad. So instead, I'm just going to treat it like a new movie. So I'm going to say something that might be heresy. <gasps> I preferred the sequel to the original. Oh, <gasps> Michael, I think you're going to get banned on our show. What are you doing? <laughs> no, 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 no. So here's my thing. <laughs> I love Tim Burton. I love his aesthetic. I love all the, his mind is amazing. All of that. But his early films, there's a moment where it's like, it's a great concept. And then it, it's like, you didn't know what to do with it. So the end of Beetlejuice, what happens? Tell me what happens. Um, out of nowhere, I can out of nowhere, a sandworm like, like comes it in. Yeah, yeah. So sandworm. nothing of that set up. Nothing like they show the sandworms earlier, but she's right. I think she's riding the sandworm even. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, so, the bride is. Yeah. So love Beetlejuice. Love the character. Love the aesthetic. But it always was one of those movies where I'm like, wow, the first 45 minutes are so great, and then it starts to fall apart for me. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, to me, a lot of people are like, it had too much going on. I thought it was great. There's so much more about the lore of what the, the hereafter is. You get to, I, I really liked it. Yeah. Uh, I like the musical. Wrote, this makes me laugh. Early Tim Burton is like SNL sketches that go on too long. <laughs> well, you know what? It's um, interesting. Because me, because I will dare say even the first Tim Burton movie that I think is complete like has a great middle beginning or a beginning middle and end is ed wood and then after that is great but all the other ones are like oh my gosh this is so great and you forgive it right you're like i love that so much i enjoyed the world but i don't know what that story was so i will say this of tim burton's batman movies i like the one <laughs> with the cat woman and the penguin was mm -hmm. my favorite because each of them had... but do you know the plot of that movie like if you you know yeah. the cat woman's in it. You know the penguin's in it. What was the plot? The penguin was um trying to find his birth parents and the cat woman wants vengeance. You know me, I love a good vengeance girl. And she okay. wants vengeance for being thrown out a window. So like I'm all about that. But I will say that I liked that movie the best out of, I felt anyway. Oh, I agree. I think Batman Returns for the one the simple it looks great. It, the actors are great, and it took place in the snow. Gotham in the snow is amazing. So, and they had more villains, right? They had Max Shrek. They had the Red Circus, or was it the Red Circus gang at the beginning? And Yeah. Yeah, no, I love Batman Returns. So I think they did a good. Okay, so um, where the heck did we end up on this? Did We're coming say up on three. Okay, but let's do some honorable mentions, because okay. there's some that I think need honorable mention that... You know, I need to mention two for Mark that I knew he was going to bring up. So the first one we all know he's going to bring up is Ghost Watch. He lives and yeah, dies by course. the 1989 movie Ghost Watch. Mm -hmm. And then Stone Tape, the 1972. The, <sighs> we've mentioned them so many times before, but Mark absolutely loves those movies. I'm going to say so far from the list, I haven't mentioned any of the ones Mark thought I would. Bo Crimson Peak, he called you out on it. He said you're gonna say it. And then Michael, he said you were gonna say Ghostbusters is one of the ones yeah. he said. So yeah. oh hey, King Toad Shane. Yep, there we go. Look at that. Simple plot. <laughs> what did Batman want to do? Okay. No, Batman's just there. <laughs> He's a frog. 
Don't bring that up. Just there. So let's do um your honorable mentions, Bo. Do you have a couple? Two, three, I do. Your honorable mentions. Uh the ring. The the oh, remake yeah. of it. There are some scenes in it that uh you know what? If I think about it, that's probably one of the first horror horror movies that I watched and kind of pulled me into the genre. And like there's scenes from it that are like stuck in my head, like the horse going off the side of the boat. Was it a boat? Yep. Or a cliff. And then uh like the girl coming out of the well, which I know is played and we've all seen it a million times now. But at the time it was the first time I'd watched something like based on Asian horror. And then I started watching a bunch of Asian horror, like Two Sisters and Did you watch those the, sorts ring, of movies. the Asian version of the ring? I believe I did see it, um, because but I like the American version more because I think it was the first one I watched. It wasn't that they were, one was better than the other. It was just the I first don't know one that one's better. I think the one thing about Asian horror, which is not a bad thing, I'm not saying anything bad, but they are way more like esoteric about things. Like they don't have to have clear delineated plot lines. They have a lot oh. of symbology. And so when I watched The Ring, I thought that it was very creepy, very scary. But I went, what? Like some of the plot lines didn't quite go anywhere. So I was like, what has happened? So I went, I'm going to go watch the original. Maybe we bastardized it. No, we added plot. Yeah. We added way more things strung together than the original. Yeah. Well, it's based on folklore, of, like Japanese folklore. So of course we're missing elements unless you like delved into it so yeah. i think that's part of it no I every, think that's like true. they're like this is folklore that people already know we don't have to explain it because they know about it that's what's happening i think yeah okay what's your other one Bo? another one hmm candy man i have candy man on my list that is a ghost movie it definitely is you know it's the michael looks like he's gonna disagree though I guess you can call a vengeful spirit a ghost. Yeah, I oh, guess that's... I... It has They're spirit in the name, Michael. I, I They're know, my but... Favorites. Okay, all right. I, okay. Love, I love Candy Man. <laughs> I love the sequel they did. I thought it was great. The new one? I like yeah. the new one, yeah. Oh, it was great. The fact it was connected made it... I was like, wow, that's that's perfect. Yeah. What about so, you? What are your two? Um, honorable mentions for me. One was Ghost Watch. I love Ghost Watch. Um, I would have loved to have seen Ghost Watch live back in the day. That would have been when amazing. When Mark did in England, he's told the story it, 500 yeah, times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he's it's bragging. Really, it's really pretty amazing. And then uh, my other one, believe it or not, is The Haunting of Hill House. Not Which one? The original with Vincent Price. Oh, Okay. But here's the thing. Is that really a ghost story? Because at the end, it's very much like Scooby-Doo, right? It was all set up to, to frame somebody. But it is a great... If if we're counting Scooby-Doo as counting, as we did earlier, because yeah. I decided, yeah. then that counts too. Yeah, the house on Haunted Hill with Vincent Price just creaks. It's amazing. I love it. Yeah, well, I one of my honorable mentions, even though it's not a movie, is Haunting of Hell House. Cause that That's TV on my show, list, too. I love that, that show. That TV yeah. show, even though it wasn't a movie, was it's phenomenally done. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Another honorable mention if, is uh, The Oculus by Mike Flanagan. Yes. Oh, yes. And also, if you follow that up, Dr. Sleep is a ghost story as well. Yeah. Oh, that's true. That's true. Um, Oculus uh, had the best soundtrack ever. Like, it was the creepiest, like, understated soundtrack. No, it's true. So another, I'm going to I'm gonna do an honorable mention that has cheese to it, but I enjoy, it's it's my, my cheesy ghost movie, which is Ghost Ship. Oh, that's great. The first yeah. five minutes of it yeah. is, wah, but the rest of it. It, it goes wonky, yeah. but I'm telling you, like, there's so, there, it's, it, but I'm a huge fan of Deep Blue Sea. Don't even get me started. We're going to do love that movie. movies at some point. <laughs> Michael, we'll have you back We're going to have to have Michael on, yeah. Deep Blue Sea, man. Love it. My hand is like a shark fin. Deep blue. <laughs> That's all I got to say. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so. We're not um, going to fight. 
anymore. We're going to climb out. Anyway, I, I love Deep Blue Sea. I love a good shark movie. So, yeah. No, I, th I think it was one of the more brilliantly done, but it's not a ghost movie. So I'm going to move on. Destiny Beard, the lyrical soprano who will haunt your dreams. With her alluring melodies and intricate harmonies, this dark siren of wistful song shall capture your soul and lead you into the night. Check out Destiny's new single, The Haunting Is Over with international musicians Sam Haynes and Gary Bennett, as well as her other musical works at destinybeard.com. Okay, so let's go for number three, which um, I'm going to throw marks out there first, and then I'll go next. Number three is John Carpenter's The Fog from 1980. So Coastal Town... It. Haunted by vengeful spirits. He says that John Carpenter's score still gives him chills. It's a great mystery. Again, skip the remake. What I think is really funny is one of my favorite comedians, Susie Azard, formerly Eddie Azard, has this joke about the fog in San Francisco. is very much like John Carpenter. It's the prob where it's kind of chasing you everywhere and moves really fast. But that that was a good movie. That was scary. I mean, Fog in general was scary, but that movie, I love the Avengeful Ghost. We all know that. But so my number three is the others. Oh, uh, that's a good one. Because I like the twist at the end. It was good. Yes. Yeah, that is definitely a twist at the end. If you have not seen the others, I'm not gonna give it away, but I will say the way they did that. I was like, what? And yeah. that rarely happens for me. Normally yeah. I can suss out the plot of a thing and I'm like, okay. But yeah, that one I was like, what just happened? And yeah. it was so brilliant. It's very slow pacing though. I will say that if you like action, fast, 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 this is a very slow burn to what's going on in this house. So that's my number three, the others. What about you, Bo? What's your number three? My number three is The Orphanage. I really like that movie. It scared the shit out of me when I saw it. There was a part where she plays a game with a ghost that made me feel physically ill because it was scaring me so bad. And sometimes I think about it when I'm like in the dark and I'm like, I just knock on this wall. What will happen? But I really love that movie. Um, it's great. Highly recommend very nice. cool. What about what about you, Michael? Where are we at on number three? My number three is the original Thirteen Ghosts. Woo! Not, not not the remake. The remake's okay, good. So I'm my number one. <laughs> is the original, the remake of Thirteen Ghosts. Okay, that's my number two. <laughs> so, have you seen the original? No, but no, but we've Matthew heard about it. it. So, you have to understand. I discovered I'm 13. Schooled. We keep fighting. Keep going. <laughs> yeah. I I discovered 13 Ghosts on TV, right? Okay. Cuz the movie came out in 1960. So it was playing on like, you know, those those weekend ghost shows like uh creature features or what have you. And I would love to be able to go back in time and see 13 Ghosts in the theater because William Castle, who is the, you know, quite the showman had a gimmick that was called Illusiono. And it was a uh, a card that had a red car, uh, a red gel and a blue gel. And in the movie, it was shot in black and white, but they tended things red and blue, right? So then you would see something come on screen and it would tell you, use your glasses. Like I think a character would pick it up. And when you look through the blue, there was nothing. But when you look through the red, there was a ghost on the screen. And now you, you can watch it without the illusion of glasses. And it's still creepy. And what I love about it is, and I don't want to ruin it, but I'm going to, it sets itself up at the end to be like, oh, this was somebody that was just trying to get their money, but it's not. And the best part is that there's a housekeeper who is played by Margaret Hamilton, 
the Wicked Witch of the West from Wi Wizard of Oz later oh. in her career. And her last line, the little boy looks up and he's like, you're really a witch, aren't you? And she just smiles and picks up a broomstick and walks out of the frame. Wow. Yeah, no, Mark brought it up because when we did our 13 Ghosts episode and I discussed the Black Zodiac, right? So if you want to hold 13 Ghosts, go listen to that episode. But the reason I love that movie is it has so much lore built into it. Yeah. It's not just like, you know, it, you know, it's haunted. I love these movies. And I think for a haunting movie, you have to have really good lore built into yeah. where this comes from and not just somebody died in this house. Because I feel yeah. like if, if that's it, it doesn't hold water very well. Right. The lore of every one of those characters is fully realized, right? Yeah. From the, the makeup to the storyline, things like that. Um, I think during the time or shortly thereafter, what is the name? Rocky Point Haunted House out in uh, Salt Lake City. They've been gone for years now, but they were pretty long running. And they, the lady that ran it actually had a 13 ghost and Greg Nicotero helped her with the makeup and provided props and things. And there was a 13 ghost haunt out there and it was apparently perfect. That's awesome. But yeah, so 13 ghosts I see is on all of our lists. Yep. Um, we, we already killed Mark's number two with the Frighteners, but what I figure I do is there's a couple movies that, um, 13 ghosts, by the way, was on Mark's list for me. So I knew that was coming, but not for you, Bo. He actually oh. thought you would mention Poltergeist, believe it or not. Weird. So he brings up some ones that are non-scary ghost movies like Field of Dreams, mm -hmm. Blackbeard's Ghost, mm -hmm. uh, High Spirits. Yeah. Ghost. Uh, Harvey. Ghost. Ghost. Yeah. Ghost. Although the end of Ghost is pretty terrifying. Uh, yeah. When they come together. I've get never seen it. Oh, oh, it's good. It's good. It is probably one of the, uh, I think it's one of that. Whoopi Goldberg's best movies. I yeah. love Whoopi Goldberg and Ghost. Yeah. And Patrick yeah. Swayze. I mean, it's romantic, heartfelt, and scary, right? There's a lot of, there's a lot in that that's really great. Yeah. So what do we think of Casper? Because I love Casper the Friendly Ghost. Um, Which one, though? The, the cartoon, the Devin Reed. Sawa one? Yeah. The Christina I've Reed. seen that one a million times. I don't know if I like it so much as it was always on. I think it's about as faithful an adaptation as you could have done of Casper. Yeah. And, I mean, Christine Ricci's great. The music by James Horner's great. You know, all the cameos at the beginning with the race dance running out, like, who are you going to call? Somebody else. No, it's really good. It's really good. It's just, I think Casper's one of those that has kind of gotten forgotten about. Mm. The other one that is a, a children's ghost movie that a lot of people don't put in the ghost movie category is Hocus Pocus. Is it a ghost movie? The summoning mm. the ghost of the Winifred sisters. But they're not the ghosts witches. when they come back. I know, but that's, just, we so, decided this is so, a zombie so, movie, Erica. Well, Opus there's a Pocus zombie in it. Zombie movie. There's yeah. a zombie, but it's a ghost movie. I don't know. This. I need to hear some more uh, proof. I don't agree with that either, Erica. Okay, I don't that's think Hocus right. Pocus is that's a ghost fine. movie. I mean, it's great. Right. Ones we haven't talked about are ones like The Paranormal Activity. Love those movies. Oh, uh, they're so, fine. The I'm first one's great. Man, I was a huge, I liked the first one, but I feel like now it is so overdone. Like sure. to the nth degree that it's lost all of its muchness to me. Yeah. You know, um, like I guess I can still hold on to the first time I watched the paranormal activity and the fact that it, you know, when he got pulled out of the room and the door slammed, it was like uh, it was pretty terrifying. There's also, um, I don't know if you'd call them haunted house. Well, I don't know if you'd call them ghost movies, although I'm going to bring them up is the, the hell house LLC movies are fantastic. Mm. 
I don't I don't think I've seen those. There's I know three of them. And there's a whole well, there's four now, and there's a whole lore behind them about this this hotel that these guys take over to create a haunt, and it's uh, it's really good. It's really good. Well, you know that's interesting. What about Insidious? I hated Insidious. Hated. Um. <laughs> See, I, I kind of view Insidious as more about demon than I See, do. See, that's what I think too. Mark mentioned it, but I, I really want to go. I into guess the that. end is ghosty because he has to go into like that. The further, yeah. Fog well, place, yeah. I would dare say Insidious is more demon and Conjuring is a ghost story. Don't talk about it. It's on my list. Okay, well, <laughs> how about you talk about it then? Because by the way, he thought I would mention the Conjuring and no. I will not mention the conjuring. Go for Look, it. Look, Mark and I Mark and I agree on this. We've discussed it before. They are fun to watch. Are they good? No. Are they fun? Yes. And they are ghost movies, all of them. Except okay. yeah. You're saying that the conjurings aren't good? Some this people say scene, that. This one scene. That alone was amazing. That is a good scene. Look, I like them. I watch them every Halloween. They're always good to me, but other people don't think they're great movies and they're full of lies, but it's fine. So, I like them. Uh, I will say the very first Conjuring is a ghost story. The second one, it gets into a ghost story, but it starts with Amityville, which is a demon story. Yeah, but then it goes to Enfield, the right? One like is a demon. Here's the thing. I mean, Ed Warren was a demonologist. So, yeah, he said so. Uh, again, it's that fine line of, well, well which, it's supernatural. No, this right? is the line I'm going to touch with the whole Warren thing. They threw everything into a demon category, regardless of what it was. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Right. Accurate. Accurate. You well, know, would you say, would you say Annabelle is a ghost story or a, or a possessed object story? That's a possessed object say, story, but so but are, it's haunted by a ghost. So it's I don't still know a ghost. that that's the case. It's possessed so, by a ghost. Here's the thing. Or a demon, it's I guess. Off something. I don't know what that something is because I just go, is it a ghost or is it not? But I mean, you can go pick up Annabelle now. Obviously, she's not that dangerous because you can go hold her at conventions and don't get me started. I could go down well, you home can't, now. You can't hold the original. She's no, still no, 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 no. She's, she's still in a cage. Conventions. The Warren the, the brother-in-law, something. It, anyway, don't get me started. It makes me just All right. mad. Number two. What's your number two? My number two is the Sixth Sense. Valid. Because that is my entire existence growing up. Was I see dead people? That's literally my yeah. life. And yeah. I remember when that movie came out. So I'm going to give it this thing is. I didn't watch it. I didn't watch the previews. I watched nothing because the moment I heard that line, I was like, I live that. I don't need to watch this movie, right? But then a friend of mine brought it over on DVD way back when that happened, rented it at Blockbuster. Oh, my gosh. So I went over. He brought it over. And I remember because I was pregnant with my daughter, I think. And he put it in and we start watching it. And 20 minutes in, I go, Oh, Bruce Willis is dead. And he looks at me. He's like, how did you know that? And I'm like, because nobody's talking to him and blah, 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 blah. And he's like, fuck you. And he gets up and he walks out. And I was like, okay, that escalated really quickly. But I think that movie was so well done. And the way the ghosts were and just the plot of that movie. And then much <clears throat> every other thing M. Night Shyamalan did was not good. So. Well, how do you how do you live up to that though? It's like he peaked, and then he's been trying to reach that ever since. And he's and made it's not good working movies. out. He just hasn't he, made another movie like that. Yeah, that's true. I did like the village. I will say that I actually am a fan of the village. I am it's too. Just, that's a different yeah, movie than Slow Burn, but yeah. I thought that was well done. But yeah, the um, the Sixth Sense, I thought that was really great because if you didn't get that plot yeah. giveaway in the beginning, yeah. Yeah. you get to the end and it's definitely another like, what the hell just happened? Yeah, no, it hits you like a ton of bricks, yeah. Yeah, yeah and they don't shy away from showing you things that are 
messed up like the whole scene with Misha Barton and she her mother had like poisoned her or whatever you'd think they would shy away from stuff like that when your uh main actor is like a little child but they that scene like sticks in my head like it was still like I've watched that movie recently and I was still like this is actually kind of scary and I've seen this movie before (laughs) what what's your number two Bo? Well, we kind of did my number two is the Conjuring movies and how much I love all of them, even though. Okay. Know. What and about I, you? I can't talk Conjuring. about my other one because Mark is going to make fun of me. Uh, my number two is Mark's number three, which is John Carpenter's The Fog. I love that movie. It is a perfect campfire ghost story. The music is still something that I listen to when I'm writing. I, I love that soundtrack. I love the look of that film. I love the kind of survivor aspect, the vengeance of the ghosts. It's just great. I love it. Yeah, no, no, it's good. It's good. Okay. Well, then that puts us at the number one slot. Hey, what was your number two? I said my number two. My, it's the six sets. Oh, and Bose was the conjuring. Yeah, she was the conjuring. Although okay. I will All say of them. that. Um, I'm them. just going to throw out the fact that um, I mentioned now all of mine, except for two that weren't really mine, which was Paranormal Activity and The Conjuring. There's one, two on Bo's list that haven't been mentioned yet. And um, one, two, three on your list, Michael, that haven't been mentioned yet. So well, I think my number one probably is on there. I I think so too, but there's two others that I don't, I don't think are on, the, you haven't mentioned them. Okay. And one of them is The Sentinel. I oh, love that movie. Yeah, that, here's the thing though. That, that falls into the supernatural, like Rosemary's Baby, Devil kind of cult thing. So I didn't view that as a ghost movie. But it literally a, says in the blurb that it's haunted. No, but a it's also, he's apartment. watching the gates of hell. He's the Sentinel over the gates of hell. So okay, a borderline movie. The next one is Burnt Offerings. <gasps> you forgot that one, didn't you? I did I forgot that one? I'm ashamed. Okay, so I'm, he went to those two for you. I'm ashamed. I love um, Burnt Offerings. You can't because I'm going to leave the other one, which I believe is your number one, and then Bo. Mm-hmm. Here are the ones. One of the ones on on his list for you is one that I almost put on my list, which is Woman in Black. Because it's a vengeful ghost, and I love vengeful ghost. But she's—it's a good movie, but it's also a period piece, so it is a slow burn sort of movie. But there are really good uh, scares in it. And I'm not sure if his other one for you is your number one. Did you already say your number one? No. Okay. Mine so are in order. I don't want to give it away. So his number one, because my number one has already been exposed which was 13 ghosts but so i'll do another honorable mention his number one is the 1963 the haunting Mm. which is um uh his which is based off the haunting of hill house greatest book uh, ghost movies of all time ignore the remake watch the original the netflix series is great but doesn't hold a candle to the original king of haunted house flicks i argue with you there mark because the haunting of hill house on netflix was Bent neck, neck lady. It's impeccable. Perfect show from beginning to end. Yes. The Dread is palatable from the first scene. Robert Wise made a masterpiece. So The Haunting is his favorite one. <laughs> Mark is going to hate me, but one that was on my list that's kind of an honorable mention is The Haunting remake with Liam Neeson. I can what? feel his rage what? from here. <laughs> no, no. No, I'm going to pretend you didn't say that. I love it. It's so stupid, but I love it. I'm going to mention The Changeling with George C. Scott. Terrific ghost film. We're going to do that instead because we're ignoring what Bo just said. (laughs) Yes, we are. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) Moving on to your number one, Bo. Again, not my number one because I did my list out of order. If I was going to pick a number one, it would be The Conjuring films because they're fun. But if I'm going to say another recent movie that I enjoyed that was Ghost, even though Michael's about to disagree with me, uh, Smile. Oh, that's not a ghost. 
That's not. It a is a ghost. A it is not. That is a demonic entity. That yep. is what that is. That is yep. a monster. Yep. yep. Well, it's it's good. Kind uh, of. I love sure, yeah. I think Kyle is brilliant. <laughs> it's a ghost movie. Okay. That's, so like saying ha- that's like saying Halloween's a ghost movie. You know what's weird? I when I was looking up lists of ghost movies, Halloween was on the list, which is wild because I don't well, see how it could be. He puts a ghost sheet on. That's like saying, you know, it's the Great <laughs> Pumpkin. Charlie Brown's a ghost movie, or <laughs> he puts a sheet on ghost movie. Yeah. Well, you know what though? I mean, if you look at it like any of these slasher films like that, and you look at um, Nightmare on Elm Street stuff like that. The whole premise of a lot of these guys is they were people that were evil or whatever and then killed, and this is them coming back. It is a far stretch for me to put them in the ghost category, though, because they're sort of more of a different kind of entity. That yeah, like they have a corporeal form. They're not, yeah. like, ghosty. Yeah. yeah. Now, so, now the, the novelization mentioned- of Halloween is that Michael Myers is somehow influenced, uh, I hate to use the word possessed, but there's an ancient Samhain spirit that is causing him to do what he's doing. And then later, you know, they went with the thorn stuff, which some people like, some people hate. I just always like Michael Myers. Like you never really knew what was going on. Like that to yeah, me. Yeah, me too. The, the shape. When they called him the shape, it was, that's, that's terrifying to me. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I also, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to go down a little bit of a path real quick before we go back to this. But one of the things too, like with a lot of these horror things, like the Nightmare on Elm Street, that first one was terrifying the mm-hmm. way they did it. it was they get silly after that, but yeah, it's still it got fun. Silly, but mm-hmm. the premise of that and this thing coming to you in your dreams, there was some cheese in the first one, but it was a very scary movie. Like the scene where he's dragging the body bag with her in it and she's like, oh, anyway. But the same is true with Friday the 13th. I felt that was so much scarier that it was the mom and not some monster thing going after all these people that had hurt her son, right? And it Yeah, was I like that. Real life monster. And then the first Halloween where he's trying to kill his sister, like. Well, you know, sister didn't come into it until Halloween too. Oh, that's true. That's so true. you read at the end of Halloween. That's why it's so powerful. It was the boogeyman. As a matter of fact, it was. That is one of the classic endings that I I would love to have seen that movie for the first time and then have to walk out into the night after that. Just oh. that that the fact is the boogeyman, right? Yeah. Well, that that was the boogeyman. He disappeared, you know. I, oh, oh, it's great. Yeah. Okay. So, Bo, I'm just gonna throw out the one of our oh, favorite oh, travelers. I have another say to you. Number right one. Here. Okay. Okay. That's what's being said by one of our travelers. Well, you know what? I like it. I don't care. Okay. I so, live. I live by my love of Liam Neeson, and I don't care. Okay. So, Bo, the movie Mark thought you were gonna say was 1408. Oh, Oh, I did. That is a good movie. And he knows how much I love Stephen King. But this brings up my actual number one, which is The Shining. But I like the TV miniseries of The Shining because it's more (laughs) Michael's face. Because it is more true to the book. It's more true to the book. Okay. So there were were a set of ground rules. We said ghost film. So... The Shining, you're speaking Erica of. Erica said The Haunting of Hill House, which is a TV series. That's I right. mentioned that it was the TV series and not on my list. So yeah. we're ignoring Bo now. I, I, over two I like the movie, too. I like the movie, too, but I like them both for different reasons. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, so Michael, <laughs> go for yours, because I believe that was your number one, wasn't it? So I, let me just preface this. I love Mick Garris who did the Shining television miniseries. And the Shining television miniseries is faithful to Stephen King's book. But my favorite ghost story film is The Shining. Even though it's not Stephen King's The Shining, that movie is pervasive with 
a sense of ghosts. Every frame, it feels like there's something there. And the, the unexplainable quality of that, that is driving Jack Nicholson, the, you know, Jack Torrance mad, and the things that start being seen, oh, when the, uh, it's so great. And that's why I also, I put Dr. Sleep. I love I, Dr. Sleep. It's so good. Dr. Sleep was amazing. You know, again, and the fact that what I loved is that Dr. Sleep, even though it was written by Stephen King and the script was more about what the Stephen King book was, it still kept the aesthetic of what we know from the first film. Um, but yeah. The Shining, I mean, just even those slow motion shots of Danny screaming, the the ghost girls, uh, it's just, it's, it's, it's terrifying. Even now, like, I dare you to watch that in the dark. It's effective. And it always had the vibe that there was something just slightly off screen that you cannot see that you were going to turn and something really scary was going to happen. It was like well, such a foreboding. Yeah. It sets you up, right? Like you, you're moving through a place and you can't stop. You don't have control. So you're like, I don't want to see this. I don't want to see it. I don't want to see what's around the next corner. And it's like, well, you can't stop. I mean, it, it yeah. felt like a nightmare. It felt like a ghost. I felt like you were being taunted. It was great. Yeah. Can you know and I that? love the lore of just what Kubrick was trying to do, right? You know, I, I, I love the book. I love Stephen King. But the lore behind what, like, documentaries like Room 237 and all these that things. That was an interesting documentary. Some of well, it was a little out there. I know. But then you kind of got to go, like, well, why would, why would Danny have a homemade Apollo shirt? Yeah. Like why? Why in night? Like why are those props there? Like that? Like right? Of the, like mural yeah, the element, or whatever. The element with the yeah. Indian and all that. Like you know, everything in that movie had a purpose, and yeah. I mean that's why we're still talking about it. You know what's or interesting is we talk a lot about like possession and things showing up, but I think one of the mm -hmm. biggest things that's really terrifying about ghosts in general or ghost movies is the unknown, the unseen, and the inability to contain, right? Is if done correctly, I mean, a lot of times we talk about, you know, ghosts being tied to a place or a person or things like that. And a lot of these, you know, later movies we're talking about is, you know, this haunted area, but like that whole thing in The Shining was you being trapped in the winter in a place you couldn't leave from. Mm -hmm. And you don't know what's around the next corner. And there's like, you know, unlike when you're talking about some of the monsters and stuff, not that we can all beat up the monsters and stuff, but I think one of the scariest things is something that you have no way to have, right? You can't right. win against these things necessarily. And that's what's terrifying. I mean, you talk about 13 ghosts and I haven't seen the first one, but the reason that was so scary to me was you know, first of all, all these things had a lore, a very poltergeist type quality to them, right? They figured out a way to contain them, and then they started letting them out, right? And the only way- And then you as the audience are contained in there too, and everything's like moving, so you're getting more stuck, and it feels claustrophobic, and you feel like nervous as these ghosts are coming up behind uh, like the main cast. Right. And I think that's what they did in Paranormal Activity. The first one was you're sitting there watching people asleep, having these things about, and you're, I mean, you can't get in there. You can't do anything. And you imagine yourself being the one that's asleep while this is happening, right? And being dragged out of the room and stuff like that is yeah, scary, scary, scary. This is what Rick is going to give you, by the way, on your stupid haunting movie. Look, I will never, ever apologize for liking shitty movies, okay? Never. I, now, Bo, I, there are shitty movies, and there's The Haunting. <laughs> I like it. It's it's terrible. Come on. It's, it's the hill she's apparently going to die on. So No, the, the hill I will die on is that I'm a Stephen King purist, and the miniseries is great. I didn't say the miniseries wasn't great. I said the movie was great. I love the miniseries. I acknowledge that 
I saw the movie first. I saw the movie The Shining mm -hmm. first, and then I read the book, and I was like, huh, loved them both independently. Love the miniseries. I think the miniseries is fantastic. But my favorite ghost film is The Shining. Now, you want to give it's that Kubrick. to Stephen King or Stanley Kubrick? I don't know. I mean, there's it's both of them. It's like Peter Benchley and Steven Spielberg together, yeah. right? The movie Jaws is not the book, although I, I think The Shining is a better book than Peter Benchley's Jaws, and I'll probably get a lot of flack for saying that, but I'm not a big fan of Peter Benchley's Jaws, although I recognize he created an amazing situation. Yes. Well, we're going to have to go down the water movies. We should do that sometime. Deep in the blue sea. Deep blue yeah, sea. Yes, but the, the scary water movies, because there are quite a few of those scary water movies, things that beneath the surface, right? Um, oh, sure. So with that. Well, Lake Placid, Deep Blue Sea, mm. obviously the one that's behind me in Jaws. But, you, I mean, everybody loves Jaws. There's one I dare you to watch that's actually pretty good. Grizzly. It came out in the eighties. It's called Humanoids from the Deep. Oh, I've seen okay. that. That will Holy be on my Lord. list. We're going to talk about that, but not tonight because today was ghosts. Today was ghosts. Michael, thank you so much for joining me. And oh, Bo. thank so you. To her, totally ruin our entire lives <laughs> with her stupid choices. So no, I mean I, she's she has a she has a point of view, and and um, you know, I mean, uh, some people like I don't know other things that are wrong. But <laughs> I never me. said I was a connoisseur of film. Obviously not. That is we're that's... not friends anymore. Oh, oh my god. We are. So no, I, I think it's I think it's charming that you love that movie. I just was so disappointed by that movie. I saw it once and was just angry because there was so much the fact that it was going to be a, a budget big budget remake of the original, which was so beloved. And the stars that were in it, it's like Liam Neeson, amazing. Lily. Uh, Tomlin, I, I think. No, yeah. Taylor. No. Lily Taylor. No. Uh, Lily, Lily Tomlin Boone? was. No. Anyway. Uh, no, not Lily Tomlin. Peter Jones, you know. But, you know, when I knew we were in trouble is when Lightning McQueen showed up, when Owen showed up. Wow. There's some ghosts in this house. Look at that. Wow. Look at that angel statue. That's pretty. Wow. <laughs> you hear those things creeping around wow i don't know what to think wow okay so i'm gonna i'm gonna get us past this because that movie does not need any more airtime from us but michael you have a book coming out can you hold it up do you have it with you i sure do oh what do you have coming out because this kind of fits into our undead october done 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 dun. hunter's tale volume one hunters and hauntings coming out halloween October yes, 31st. Pre-order now. Yes, it's up for pre-order. We will put a link in the show notes. It has, uh, why don't you do a little brief description of what they're going to find in that book? They are going to find stories of haunts, hauntings, uh, original fiction from the people that have brought you some of the coolest haunts in the industry. It's amazing. And also interviews, all new interviews. So oh, there's me. Yeah, it's it's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. You guys, if you love anything about haunting, haunts, uh, you know, haunted events and things like that, check this out. It is an amazingly fun book. And it's from the voices of some of the biggest people in the business, including J. Michael Roddy. Michael, thank you so much for being here thank with you. us. Happy Halloween. Yes. yes, happy Halloween. And with that, my Garth Marenghi has nothing on J. Michael Roddy. Okay. That, that, I, that's Who's from Garth um, Florida. I'm not sure. You don't know who Garth Marenghi is? No. He, he is, he's amazing. Okay, that's a different, that is a different show. We will go over Garth Marenghi. Is he in The Haunting? Uh, no. Um, <laughs> he probably would write explain, something just like The Haunting, though. I will explain later who Garth Marenghi is. And with that, guys, thank Does you. Does he make listening. pie? I no. love a good Marenghi pie. No, no. Thank you so much, <laughs> travelers, for listening. We appreciate you being here. And of course, as always, make sure you pay attention to those things that go bump in the night. There are probably going to be way more trick-or-treaters this year than there are actually kids in your neighborhood. And if you're wondering if something's watching you, it probably is. And with that, we will see you on the other side. <laughs>